This is Adele Gasly. I'm going to present to you part 6 of the chapter about synchronous machines. This chapter will cover the following topics. Power factor control and speed control. And like induction machines, synchronous machine power factor is controllable by the field or excitation current IF. So by varying the excitation current IF, the excitation voltage varies its angle delta varies and the power factor angle theta varies also. This is considered as an important advantage for the use of synchronous machines. Let's assume that the synchronous motor is operating under constant power. We know that the power equation is given as shown here. Since the machine is connected to an infinite bus, then we can consider that the terminal voltage Vt is also constant. Therefore, the product Ia cosine theta and Ef sine delta are also constant for constant power operation. The phasor diagram for a given value of the excitation current If1 leading to an excitation voltage Ef1 and an armature current Ia1 is shown here. By controlling the excitation current IF, the locus of the excitation voltage for constant power will be this one, where EF sine delta is constant. And the locus of the armature current for constant power will be this one, where IA cosine theta is constant. So for a higher excitation current IF2, we can have this phasor diagram. And for even higher excitation current IF3, we have this phasor diagram. So as you can notice, the excitation current IF1 led to a lagging power factor, while the excitation current IF2 led to unity power factor, and IF3 led to leading power factor. This graph illustrates the variation of the armature current and power factor for constant power operation when the excitation current is varied. Notice that the minimum current IA2 occurs at unity power factor. So we can distinguish two modes of excitations. The first one is over excitation that happens when the projection of EF on VT is bigger than VT. And the second one is under excitation that happens when the projection of EF on VT is smaller than VT. Let's first consider the case of over excited motor. If we increase and adjust the feed current until EF cosine delta, which is the projection of EF on VT, becomes bigger than VT, then the machine is over excited and the power factor is leading like what is shown here in this phasor diagram where the armature current is leading the terminal voltage. The reactive power is positive which means that it is delivered to the source in the motoring operation. In this case the motor operates as a capacitive load and is called a synchronous condenser. For the case of ender excitation the field current is decreased and adjusted such as EF cosine delta is smaller than the terminal voltage VT. In this case, we have a lagging power factor as shown by this phasor diagram. Therefore, the reactive power becomes negative, which means that the reactive power is received by the motor from the source. So the motor operates as an inductive load. If a synchronous machine is not transferring any power, but is simply floating on the infinite bus, the power factor is zero. That is, the stator current either leads or lags the stator voltage by 90 degrees. The magnitude of the stator current changes as the feed current is changed, but the stator current is always reactive. Looking from the machine terminus, the machine behaves as a variable inductor or variable capacitor as the feed current is changed. An unloaded synchronous machine 
is therefore called a synchronous condenser and may be used to regulate the receiving end voltage of a long power transmission line. However, at present, solid state control of inductors and capacitors is being used increasingly to achieve voltage regulation of transmission lines, which is more cost effective than the synchronous condensers. Now let's see how we can control the speed of the synchronous machine. The control of the speed of a synchronous motor can be achieved by f changing the frequency of its power supply. By increasing the frequency, the speed will increase, and by decreasing the frequency, the speed will decrease. Note that unlike the speed of induction machines, the speed of synchronous machines does not change with the torque. Frequency control can be achieved by power electronics converters, as shown in this example. The three-phase AC power is first converted into a DC power using a rectifier. Then this DC power is converted back into AC, but with variable frequency using an inverter. In summary, we can say that in order to control the speed of a synchronous machine, we need to control the frequency of its power supply, and to control the power and torque, we need to control the excitation current. This is the end of this part. Thank you for watching this video.